Muhammad Hussein al Amudi. I'm in Eritrea. I was born in a place where they call it Ali Kidir in Eritrea. I, bought, I was born in 1955, 11, 12, 1955. Okay, and uh, Muhammad, uh, I came to know that you have been uh, in prison in Eritrea. And I came to know that you have been in America before you came back to Eritrea. Could you just tell me what happened and why did you go back from America to Eritrea? And what happened uh, the last uh, years that you were in Eritrea? Okay, when I was in America, I just go over there for a course. I was taking a course six months, English language. Then uh, I used to work with, a, I have a cousin, my, he's a very rich man. You know, he used to help me a lot to invest some money in me. He told me, what do you think if you go back to Eritrea after they take the referendum to invest there because he was born there as a new country. So I said, good, okay. Then I go to Ethiopia. From Ethiopia, I come to Djibouti. From Djibouti, I enter to Eritrea. I have with me about $285,000 to come to invest. So they catch me. I was going to uh, Asap. Uh, the first time, and then uh, Mahidin Shangab, he come over there, and Asab Zayab, when he come there, he told him he's my cousin and everything, so they told me, okay, you put the money in, in, in the bank, okay, everything will be okay, and I don't have that time, the nationality, they say, okay, we can give you the nationality of Eritrea, is you are Eritrean, but you have to sign this paper, you, you don't have any other nationality. I say good, and then after maybe two months, I was sitting in a bar, they call it Para America in Asmara, and we was talking. That was in uh, uh, this uh, September, September 25, I remember 2001, about 10 o'clock at night, I was talking to some older friends who were saying, why those 15 people, they've been arrested now, and they was suffer, they was fighting for the country after they get the freedom now, <coughs> he put them in jail and why he's doing that, the president. And that was about it, that we don't say nothing else. Then when I come out uh, after one hour, the FBI, they was waiting for me, the security of Eritrea. They said, we want to talk to you. I said, no problem. They put me in the car, they took me to a place, but I never been there before. And this, throw me there, they give me to the police, they have a secret uh, place they take you. And they left me there. One day, two days, six months, I can't even talk to nobody. After six months, one guy, coroner, his name was the Simret, he come. He told me, are you okay? I said, yes, I'm okay, but I want to know why I'm here, why, what I'm doing here in jail. For what? What I done something wrong? He said, don't worry, we're going to call you. So I go inside, I ask the people there, hey, how are you? How long have you been here? Some people, they say five years. Some people, six years. Some people, ten years. I was shocked. I say, wow, those people, they didn't know what's going to happen to me. I ask them, what you do? He say, I never even know what I did. So nobody know what kind of crime they commit. They just take you and throw you there. Anyway, when I was there, I met a lot of good people, like, uh, very intelligent people, all the people. I remember, uh, one of them was Hassan KK, it was all guys, a rich man. Uh, one of them, his name Abdu, Abdu they call him, his, father, his uh, son, he's the father of Ali Abdu. He was, uh, he was one of the ministers, he was in Eritrea. And I met brother Dawood Sak, he's a journalist. He's telling me he's to, uh, he has a uh, Sweden nationality. He's been there. Then uh, I met some coroner, what soon they call it. I met a lot of people. So me and Dawood Saga was for two years in one camera. Cameras means... One cell. In one cell means, mm -hmm. okay? Cell where it takes six people. They put us in the big, like, you know, big cell. Me and him and uh, this coroner, what soon we can join, and two people from Afar. Afar, this is uh, some kind of... Uh, Eritrean people, they are entire by well, here. Ethnic group. Ethnic Afar group. ethnic group. Afar ethnic group. So it was two years me and Dawood Sak. Dawood Sak, he was the one who used to bring our camp server from the store. He bring the, 
you give you a piece of paper and a pen, you write what you need if you have an account in your money. Like if you want to buy a soda or cigarette or milk, you know. He's the one who used to bring to us. So he was, he was moving a little bit, they gave him some kind of movement. But at the same time, he was very upset because he'd been there for so long and he doesn't know when he come out. But I remember one time they took him out in 2006, I think so the beginning of it. And he was there for one week. And they returned him back to jail. I said, what happened, David? He said, because the embassy, the ambassador of Sweden, he, he called me in the phone. Then I got to see him, so they turned me back. They said, why you have to talk to the embassy of Sweden? That's it, he said, that's it. From that time, we've been together for another year with him. And then uh, 2007, October, they took me to Shat Shaim, the sixth uh, police station, they call it. And I left Dawood there. When I come back, Dawood, I don't know where they put him. So because the, the, the prison is so too big, the place is underground. It's some kind, I don't know, that's been made, I think so, for... Not for... <laughs> not even crazy people, they can stay in this place. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's what I know about Dawood. He was a very good friend of mine for two years. He liked to read a lot. He smoked a lot of cigarettes. He, is, he doesn't like to talk too much. And he was saying, say, the government of Sweden, they did everything for me. They even uh, lose the friendship of, uh, with the rich because of me. And, you know, he was talking a lot, but he said, I, I know I'm not going to go out from this prison until I see us, the prison, he died. Or this government, he will change, but I know I will not go out. That's what he was saying. Okay, he was Salah al Jazairi. That was his friend, too. He was... Uh, one of those uh, guys that was working together, I think, so he was a generous too. So they was always talk together, you know. So that's all I can say. And I, I think, after all this, just like I say, I come to Sweden. I think the government, or the people of Sweden, they accept me as a refugee. They open their heart. They give me a shelter place to stay. They gave me a medical treatment. And I'm waiting to be accepted as a seeking asylum. How long, how long did he stay in jail, in total? In, George, in total, I stayed 13 years. 13 years exactly I stayed. When I was there, 11 years, my wife, my two sons, my daughter, they was... They lost hope. They said, well, our father is not coming out no more. So they tried to go. They come to Sudan and they went to Libya. They died in the water, in the sea. Okay? There was... I remember it was in 2013, October 3. Yeah, so I lost my eye in jail because there was no medication, there was no doctors. Okay, I've been tortured. My tooth it was taken by pliers, you know. A lot of things that happened to me and I'm never gonna forget. But I think it's God, I'm still alive. You know, I am blind, but I can't talk right now what happened to me, what I see. Because I am in a country where it's free to speak, free to talk what's in your mind, free to tell the truth. That's why I am very happy to be here. What would you say to the Eritreans who are here in Sweden and uh, denying all what you are telling, that these things are not happening in Eritrea? What I'm saying, if those people, they deny what happens in, in Eritrea, why they come here then? Uh, if they say it's the government there is good, why they come here? No, those people, they be saying that, that means they lying. Because when they come here, they seek, they seek for asylum, they say, oh, because our country. But when they see things like this, that I've been there, then they say, no, there's nothing happened like this. So why you come here? Because if they don't believe my story, that means, uh, I don't understand. Because I come from there and I know what they're doing. And they know exactly what happened there. Okay? But those people, they come here when they seek for asylum, they say because we come here because the government is no good, they are this and that. So now, soon they get their paper, oh, no, our government is good, our, no. There is another group who, who applied for asylum during the Ethiopian uh, administration. And now, I mean, they have been living here for more than 25 years. Eritrea became independent in 1993-91. So, uh, at least officially 93, 91 was the Independence Day. So, 
what about those who have stayed longer here and still saying like these things could not happen in Eritrea? Okay, if those, uh, I mean, okay, let's say they came here when the Ethiopia time, yeah, okay, because really it was a problem. But now, <coughs> after they took a referendum and they become independent, things change. Now, if they think it's good there, hey, they can see, they can go see, they can go stay there. But I don't think what's so good about it. It is nothing good about. It. Even if we have so long, okay. If you think the country is good, so you talk about is nothing happen like this. There, so why why you come here for them? Can you stay there, okay? So they they're not telling the truth. Those people. Why do you think they freed you finally? Because every everyone else who has been with you still there. Why do you think? What is the reason they really... The reason because I become blind, okay? Mm. I stay blind for four years. From 2011 I was blind until I came out 2013, 14. Okay, so they say, oh, this man blind, you cannot, you can't do nothing no more. You can't even, let's let him out and watch him where he going. But I was blind in the eye, but I wasn't blind in my heart. I can see my way out. Huh? And I make it 